You may be surprised to know that certain nutritional deficiencies can make Crohn's disease worse. And I'm not talking about fats, carbs, and proteins. You'll want to stick around for this one. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Chanu Dasri. I help my clients solve their immune inflammation and digestive dysfunction using the mind-gut immunity method. This clinical approach has helped thousands of patients resolve their symptoms, some in as little as six weeks, without the need for complex or costly interventions. In this video, I'll show you the top nutritional deficiencies in Crohn's disease, and I'm willing to bet that some of these you won't expect. I'll show you how these deficiencies play out and what you can do to prevent them. Now, keep in mind that having good nutrition plays an important role in down-regulating inflammation in the body. So when the body doesn't have certain nutrients, the inflammation can get totally out of control. This material you're about to watch is taken straight out of my Mind Gut Immunity Academy, where people just like you learn how to beat their Crohn's disease symptoms for good, even when the diagnosis is unclear. In the course, we review several additional nutrients that can be useful for addressing inflammation. In my other video, I mentioned that there were five main triggers for inflammation, and these five triggers are diet, digestion, sleep, stress, and exercise. And if you want to check out that video for some background, take a look up here. Now before we go any further, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell to keep up to date. I make musty videos for anyone struggling with Crohn's disease, looking to reverse their symptoms for good. And it's really helpful information that you probably won't get anywhere else. Now on the topic of nutritional deficiencies, the mistake I see most people make is that they just assume that they're eating a balanced diet. But what exactly is a balanced diet? We know that the standard American diet can actually make inflammation worse, but why is that? Knowing what nutrients we're deficient in can be very valuable for reversing disease quickly, and that's why we talk about it here. Also recall that what I said in my other videos, most inflammation starts in your gut. And you shouldn't be surprised by this considering around 70 to 80% of your immune system is contained in your gut. So when you have an inflammatory disease, you need to take a close look at what's going on with diet and digestion. Frequently, inflammation starts in the intestines, so to heal inflammation, you need to heal the gut. So before we discuss the top nutritional deficiencies, if you're serious about healing the gut to improve Crohn's disease and achieve results fast, check out a free training that I put together where I walk you through the specific strategies that have helped my clients achieve success within six weeks. You can access it at the link below the video, and I know it'll help you so much. The link takes you to a page where you enter in your email to receive a free training on how to reverse Crohn's disease. Everything you need to know is in there, including a free nutritional guide with specific dietary recommendations and tons of helpful case studies of people just like you who reverse their conditions for good and are now totally healthy. The case studies are valuable because you'll see how real people dealt with their inflammation were able to improve their health as a result. The training comes with complete actionable game plan for how you can do this at home. Just enter in your email at the top of the page and get started. Now let's talk about nutritional deficiencies. I recorded this video earlier and it discusses what's probably deficient in your diet. The most common vitamin deficiencies are vitamin D3 and B12. Mineral deficiencies include magnesium, zinc, and selenium. If you're wondering about the dosages and how to select reliable brands, I posted a link below with my top supplement choices for Crohn's disease. Now the biggest nutritional deficiencies in Crohn's disease is phytonutrients. That's P-H-Y-T-O, nutrition, phytonutrition. What are they and why are they important? Phytonutrients are molecules from plants and fungi that exert a strong positive influence on human health. Think superfoods. They're anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, and anti-aging. What most doctors don't tell us is that there are thousands of scientific papers that show phytonutrients reverse inflammation. In fact, all the pharmaceutical companies have tried to replicate these results using medications. So it's very important that you know what phytonutrients are and how you can use them to heal your body. High phyto diets means less inflammation. My philosophy is that every time you eat is an opportunity to fuel the mind, heal the gut, and reset immunity. So don't squander these opportunities. I'm a strong believer in high dose phytonutrient supplementation every day with every meal. Terpenes are brain boosters. They are nootropics. They help nerves, they boost mood, aid in digestion, alleviate pain, and improve concentration. They are obviously anti-inflammatory and contained in foods such as mushrooms, hemp, spices, herbs, etc. They're also found in large amounts in citrus peel zest and things like peppermint, 
basil, anise, fennel, ginkgo biloba, ginseng, bacoba mineri. Some of the ones to be aware of are carotene found in carrots, leucine, monoterpenes, diterpenes, triterpenes, and tetraterpenes, and arenosines found in mushrooms. My favorite ways to consume them are teas, spices, mushrooms, and organic whole food extracts. Next, we have phenols, also called polyphenols. These are special plant micronutrients that optimize mind, gut, immune function. They include things like quercetin, camphorol, myrosetin, rutin, apigenin, luteolin, catechins from lentils, peas, ashwagandha, green tea, flavanols from berries and red wine, resveratrol, that's the one Dr. Oz made famous, curcumin from turmeric, tannins from tea, berries, and bark, cinnamate, gallate, capsaicin from chilies, gingerol, rutin, ferulate, camphor, bromelain, theoflavin from various herbs and spices. Now my favorite ways to consume phenols are dark berries, green vegetables, spices, tea, beans, and lentils. If you consume beans and lentils, soak them overnight and pressure cook them. They have these complex proteins called lectins, which can cause problems with leaky gut, inflammation, and digestion. But all you need to do is soak them and pressure cook them, and the lectins disappear. Okay, moving on. Chlorophyll is a phytonutrient found in most plants and marine algae. It's responsible for photosynthesis, which is a process that converts sunlight radiation into energy. Chlorophyll is a powerful scavenger of free radicals and toxins in the body. My favorite ways to consume them are in salads and shakes with lots of green and leafy vegetables. Important to know, chlorophyll is heat sensitive, so don't overcook the veggies. You can eat them raw or lightly steam them or blanch them. If you fry them or burn them, they pretty much lose all their chlorophyll. I like these cold pressed green juices and wheatgrass shots from those fancy juice bars. They have a ton of chlorophyll in them. Okay, next. Thiocyanates are found in cruciferous vegetables such as broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, and cabbage, bok choy, kale, wasabi, horseradish, and capers. The most well-known nutrient in this family is sulforaphane, which is a powerful liver detoxifier. The reason that's important is the liver filters the blood coming from the gut, so it's a very important organ that regulates inflammation. My favorite way to consume sulforaphane and thiocyanates are salads and shakes, but I'll give you a suggestion. If you add a bit of powdered mustard, it contains an enzyme that helps sulforaphane metabolize in the body. Also, broccoli sprouts have 10 times the amount of sulforaphane than the actual flour. So try to incorporate sprouts and microgreens into your recipes. Phyto oils. This is a very important category because most of your fat should come from phyto oils. Examples include alpha linoleic acid, ALA or omega-3 for short, gamma linolenic acid, which is a cis omega-6 acid, palmitoleic acid, which is omega-7, and oleic acid, which is omega-9. A couple things to mention here. For ALA, natural sources tend to be better than supplements because they work better in the human body. For the gamma linolenic acid, it's the only omega-6 that is anti-inflammatory because it's the cis isomer. Cis is the opposite of trans. Trans fats are bad, cis fats are good. But if you have a trans omega-6, which can come from mostly animal sources, this can sometimes be harmful. So just to reiterate, all four of the beneficial phyto oils listed here are omega cis fatty acids, not trans fats. Finally, the last one on the phyto oils list is PEA. It's got a very long name that you don't need to memorize, and it's found mostly in avocados. But if you're trying to get good phyto oils and fats into your diet, go for flax, chia, walnut, almonds, avocado, nut milk, genuine olive oil, and sea buckthorn oil. Also, I wanted to briefly comment about olive oil. I emphasize genuine olive oil because there was a recent published report that found many brands of extra virgin olive oil are mixed with other less healthy oils. So do your research. Look for the ones with a light green tint to them and have a bit of a grassy taste to them. Phytonutrients determine whether someone ends up taking lifelong medication versus beating their inflammation for good. Throughout history, this has also been the case. 
Phytonutrition has its roots in ancient civilizations like Native Americans, Africans, Greek, Roman, Indian, Chinese, and Asian. Most humans for many millennia have used plants and herbs and fungi as medicine to cure ailments. In fact, many modern pharmaceuticals you see out there are derived from these phyto compounds. And in parts of the world where they grow their own food, immune disease is practically non-existent. So when people downplay phyto, I sort of laugh because it's actually the original therapy that prevented inflammation. All right, I hope you enjoyed that video. Now, I wanna know what phytonutrients are you most interested in learning more about? Leave a comment below and let me know your thoughts. I'll make more videos on these topics. Also, if you like this video, help support my channel by sharing this with your fellow loved ones and be sure to subscribe for more useful tips. You can follow me on social at DossieryMD. And as always, this is Dr. Dossery with the MindGut Immunity Clinic. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.